Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Friday. Um. <laughs> okay. This morning, we, I want to to say we had a special guest coming and make of this today, and I got to introduce the host, Mr. David Zivelin. Zuli Johnson. Zuli Johnson, everyone. And and who is that special guest that we have today? Jamie Waller. Yes, Jamie Brewer. And as we say it, welcome to Meet the Biz. Amanda? Did you like my muffins? How many times do we have to have this conversation? You gotta stop coming by the station. This is your last chance. I am not taking you to the movies. Is it my dress? <sighs> no. It's very pretty. And you're a very lovely young woman. You're just not my type. It's your loss. The Celtic dudes believe that on October 31st, the boundary separating the realms of the living and dead disappeared, and the dead could walk amongst the living. That's why people dress up, to scare away the ghosts. No way I ever want to be a ghost. It's so sad. What are you going to dress up as this year, Eddie? Oh, are you blushing? <laughs> Look at you. You know what? I think that's a hell of a costume. Come here. Now, who did that to your face? Violet. Violet, that girl's got another cupcake coming. Now, wash <laughs> that smut off your face. No. I want to be a pretty girl. Well, you're not a pretty girl. And you know it. I want to be. Who oh, put her in a home, they said, even daddy. But no, I couldn't do that. I don't want to be Snoopy. I want to be a pretty girl. Do you know what they think when we walk down the street? There, yeah, but for the grace of God, go I. You make them feel lucky. And they think I'm a hero. As though I've had some choice. No, it... talking about. Now give it here. I'm the next Supreme. 
I just killed the woman's store with my powers just now, and I will kill you. What is going on here? Oh, she say she the next Supreme. Say she done killed the neighbor lady. Oh, great. Now we'll have more cops on our trail. Whose baby is that? Mine. Check the skin tone. She stole it. She's going to kill it. This girl is out of line. Nan, hand the baby back to her, or I'll make you do it. <laughs> now leave. You have blood on your hands. The both of you. Welcome to Meet the Biz. And Jamie Brewer! <laughs> Right here. Well, how are you? You know me, I'm, not, I'm always okay. I know you are. <laughs> Should we talk about our past life? <laughs> Do we? <laughs> I don't know. We always say we had a little past life, but one of these days we're going to have to talk about the future life. Yeah. I told her, and then my next life I'm going to be a cocker spaniel. But you never know. I, honestly, with that, with that in mind, with me, I, I already kind of know what, what mine is going to be. Really? What may that be? You know Bella. She's a mini Yorkie. I would actually become a mini Yorkie and be a sister and be an all fours. I love that. So we're both going to be dogs. Sounds like it. Uh, yes. I love cats, but I prefer dogs. I'm both. Yeah? Okay. I had a cat in Texas. Tell me about growing up, and when did you want to become an actress? I've had the passion for the arts ever since, I, ever since I've been young. And when it comes to the theater world, I have a lot of background with. I started learning theater in my eighth grade. I've been creative all my life, but um, I started learning in a summer program during eighth grade. I learned everything about the theater world. And did you grow up? Not just the acting. Not <laughs> just the acting. Did you grow up in in this area? Southern California, Orange County. Um, and then we traveled. <laughs> where did you travel? From Orange County, we traveled all over the place, from Southern California to Northern California, Discovery Bay, and then from Discovery Bay to Texas, and then back to California. I graduated high school in Texas. Year 2004. 2004. I was only five years old then. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, wonderful thing about you, first of all, I have to say, you are one of my favorite actresses, period. So I just had to say this. I mean, you are stunning uh, in so many ways. and. My God, you've done movies, TV. Theater. Uh, theater, right. Off-Broadway. Off-Broadway. Tell, tell me about what was your first big break? The first big break into the industry, I think we all know, is American Horror Story. <laughs> Love that show. <laughs> <laughs> and if I can, a little audience participation, Guess the, guess, the, guess the roles of AHS that I was in. Guess the roles I was. Uh, anybody? The names of the roles? Anyone? No one know? Oh, y yes. <gasps> And also Hedda. Oh, you know I didn't see Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone, Naomi Grossman from American Horror Story. Come on, we got a seat for you here. Yes, right here. 
<laughs> I am too. <laughs> We've got a American Horror Story uh, a group fest here. Yeah. I love it. And I forget that you know Naomi is Pepper in, 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 a, in, in a dress. I definitely. That is one you have now gone on, I believe, the top 10 list of all time of iconic roles oh. on TV. I mean, Pepper is I like amazing. The people on oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. I mean, even Pepper. Pepper had that beautiful heart. So, thank you. What, what? Most beautiful spirits on television. Yes. Yes. Well, American Horror Story. So you got to act with, t tell me all these amazing actors that you worked with. Being a daughter to Jessica Lange. Being a sister to Evan Peters. Uh, in, well, knowing all the seasons. Um, that first season. In the third season, Nan, a clairvoyant witch. Yes. <laughs> That's been seen multiple times. <laughs> with also the, the newest season of eight as well. Uh, Hedda, which is in Cult, season seven, which is kind of neat, working with um, Dot Marie Jones, her birthday is today. Oh, happy birthday, Dot. Happy birthday. <laughs> as well as, as I said, Jessica Lane, Dot, um, Sarah Paulson. Question. Did you have a favorite role that you played out of all those characters? Um, all, of them, all of them are my favorites. The most personal is Addie. Uh, and why Addie? Because Addie also rings true to the Down Syndrome community. Why is that? Um, I think in a certain way Ryan wanted to um, show Down Syndrome in a horror genre. Because uh, you can see Down Syndrome in different, different, different aspects of the industry. And I haven't, and I just feel like I feel that um, Ryan wanted to bring in Down syndrome into the horror genre, especially in TV. Now, you are you're an inspirational speaker, and you talk a lot about you travel around talking about Down syndrome. Is this correct? Yep. And. It's, yeah, I've traveled, I've traveled the globe in, in some way. Not yet, not yet fully the globe, but I've gone through, I've done different places. I've done Nashville. I received a Catalyst Award in Nashville for Amy and the Orphans. Oh, my God. Next time you're there, you should call Charlene Tilton up because she lives there. All right. I've been through different places in advocating. And for me, I love it. It's always a, a really humbling and exciting feeling that I'm advocating for individuals that work here and work at other places that can't get that that with knowing the work schedule of many individuals can, can, can be crazy. So you guys have somebody that can travel. So congratulations in the award, by the way. That's one of the current awards I've recently gotten. One thing that I, I, I wanted to say is I'm jumping to Broadway because Amy, Amy and the Orphans, off-Broadway, they say it's off-Broadway, but, I mean, a block away is Broadway. So I'd hey. say that's Broadway. Don't you say? It's in a, yeah, in a way. Yeah, in a way. Um, I always say that even though it's off-Broadway, it's still Broadway. I do too, because I mean, right on the other side, Hamilton was playing. So oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> it was right on the same street. Huh, neat. It was neat. It was neat. But I have to say, one of the you know I'm doing the top ten, but I, I have to say, one of the best moments in my life was to fly to New York and see you on, on that stage. on stage. I was sitting second row, center. And the curtains open, and there's Jamie, and I just... On a bed. <laughs> I just kveld, you know? You know what kvel is? It's a Yiddish word for, like, you know, having spilkes. <laughs> but that's a Yiddish word, too. You know, just 
It just, tell me, t tell me about that. Tell me about that experience. But Amy, the orphan said in New York, it's incredible. Um, the Roundabout Theater and the, and the Pacific Theater, the Lower Palace Theater, uh, but on the, the show, and it's truly incredible. The Roundabout team is incredible, from Scott Ellis, who directed it, and including the writer, Lindsay Ferentino. L this play of Amy and the Orphans, it's very personal. It's a very personal vibe to it. Um, Lindsay has an aunt, or actually had an aunt, that has Down syndrome. And she was trying to find somebody with Down syndrome to portray her aunt in this day and age. And people were, she was trying to find different people. And at the time, uh, at the time when this first got, got when I first got wind of this, I was also in New York for a fashion week, for a New York fashion week. And that's when I started meeting Lindsay in New York. And then several years later, the play comes about. And it's really neat. It shows what, on how far Down syndrome has grown from the year Lindsay's aunt was alive to now and seeing me in it. And also for an understudy, Edward Bobanel is, is gender neutral. So there was another version called Andy and the Orphans. And, but the true, it's still the same storyline. Some of the lines are different. The true storyline is with Amy. I have to say, it was, it was absolutely gorgeous. I was sitting there, and I was in New York, I, I don't know, for several days. And I had my choice of three plays. And the second play I went to see was Amy and the Orphans. I had to see it again. It was so good. You were so good. And I cried every time. Yeah. It, it was so, I mean, you're so brilliant. And I said, this is going places. And you won a Drama Desk Award, uh, award right? Drama Desk yes, Award? Yes, Drama Desk. I won two major awards, actually. Drama Desk and a Theater World Award for it. The Drama Desk, I was beyond amazed by, because my family and I weren't expecting us to win, me to win. We were just going there just to be part of the audience and be and get introduced to, to that world. And then all of a sudden, Amy and the Orphans pops, pops in and my name, and I'm an award winner. Earth Angel. Okay. Outstanding featured actress in a play. You guys ready? The nominees are Jocelyn Bio in The Blood, Jamie Brewer, Amy and the Orphans, Barbara Martin, People, Places, and Things, Deidre O'Connell, Fulfillment Center, Constance Shulman, Bobby Clearly. And the winner is Jamie Brewer, Amy and the Orphans. But I want to thank everyone that's here in believing, the, in, uh, in believing in what I can do and also to show you guys what individuals with disabilities can do, to show you who we are. So thank you, Drama Desk, and everyone that's here. Was amazing. You need to check it out on the interview. Uh, the, the uh, you need to check it out on the internet because it's. I, I actually saw it. Somebody texted me and said she won. She won. And I like and turned. I'm guessing that was my mom. <laughs> no, well, actually, it wasn't. It was another friend who was there that night. 
And, and uh, so I looked it up, and, and then I got the text from your mom, yeah. so, who is amazing and wonderful. <laughs> she hides in the back. <laughs> I love it. Um, I wanted to talk, we're jumping around your career because it is, it has gone so, it, it makes me so thrilled to be here at this time, living at this time. You are one of the people who inspire me, and some, some people hear that word and think it's a dirty word, but I don't. What, what? It's not. Why is inspire not a dirty word? It's not because you can be inspired by different things, by nature, by people, and culture. There's many different things you can be inspired by. And to a nice surprise, and saying hi to John, JT over there. Mr. John Tucker from Born This Way. Very nice, very nice. What, that question, what inspires you the most? Family. Why family? Because family is vast. Family is long-lasting. You never, you get, you get to always find new people, learn different cultures and the different languages, and see who people really are. And when you see the heart of people, that, and see it right away, as you get to know them. Their true spirit comes alive. The, 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 the breath, the inspiration, everything comes alive. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. It's true. I mean, I have to say that one of the reasons I think I'm still here on this planet is because of my family, not just the blood family, but um, the extended family, yeah. um, which is here, right here, Performing Arts Studio West. I'm so blessed to be here. Uh, hey, yeah. It's such, it's a beautiful family. Um, and uh, I love you. I love you all. I have uh, wanted to see about showing the clip from Love You More. If we have a clip. And we're going to show a clip of this, and then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. I'm going to yeah, open it. show. Yep, look it up. Thank you. Follow me into the kitchen. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. And the hits just keep on coming. I used to sit right here until I get my own private residence. I'm the Jane Burger Sestory. She's a hamburger Sestory. <laughs> That's David. <laughs> Come a girl. He thinks he's funny. That's Jerry. He's David's audience. Everyone calls me Big D. Nobody calls him Big D. Big D, hand him a potato. Well, see, she calls me Big D. I love you, Maggie. No rules, I'm working. OK. So, Lakeys or Mets? Lakeys or the Mets? Lakeys or the Mets? Andy, I go with the Mets. Man, it's wet out there. Really coming down. That's Angel. He was in prison, but the Jane Burger House gave him a second chance. He's sober now. And he took up the trash. Oh, she makes it sound so unglamorous. I also clean toilets. Ew! Who am I? Wait, wait, wait. Just one. And doopy. Hey, hey. Oh, Cowan! Hey, hey. I said doopy. I got a doopy. Hey, I got a doop, 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 doopy. High five. High five, Andy. What? You don't like the Mets and I don't like boobs? All right, guys, it's enough with the potatoes. You don't like boobies. Big D, he doesn't like boobs. Not with the potatoes. It's a no <laughs> okay, Andy? That's, hey, a, that's hey, not uh, Maggie. acceptable behavior at the Shepherd Girl House. Maggie, <laughs> everybody, calm down. Oh, hold <laughs> up, huh? Jerry? It's enough with the potatoes. Andy, that was way over the line. That's not acceptable behavior at the Jim Ruger House. Raquel? Raquel, we need a meeting. Karen, are you coming? <laughs> It's going to rain. I know that, man. <laughs> <laughs> that 
I love that. We saw a bunch of people we know there. What? John Tucker. John Tucker. Jamie Brewer. And other members of friends of John and I from Born to Act players, Kevin Ewing, Margaret Milt Mueller, oh, Luke, Luke Zimmerman, Performing Arts Studio, Studio West. West. So we've got... That is a perfect example of what everybody in this room can do. That show shows you and that was on what, 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 where was that on? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. It was really, I mean, it's, it's really a wonderful show. And uh, I was blessed to be the coach on the set for, for the week that we went up to Canada. Tell us more about that experience. Oh, Canada, I love you more, is amazing. <laughs> um, as well as you saw, um, Bridget Everett is a, also a really good friend of mine as well. She has this really neat, this really neat show that goes on in New York. Um, on a side note, um, being a part of Love, Love You More, and with me being the Jane Burger success story, <laughs> it's kind of a neat feeling. And that also shows you family. Shows you diversity of family. With John Tucker, myself, Luke Zimmerman, Margaret Mueller, Kevin Ewing, it, brings a lot of the community together. Definitely, definitely. Um, what what um, was one of your favorite things about being on that set? Uh, one of my favorite things um, was the environment of it. And I was actually tempted, I, I didn't really get a chance to, I was tempted to play that bowling from the Wii. The what? The Wii bowling. Oh, yes. I'm a fair bowler. <laughs> So you like bowling? Yeah. Okay, that's we got to do that someday. So that's like soon. Years ago, when I was also in Texas, I was part of the Special Olympics. I still am part of the Special Olympics, but in Texas, I did two sports. I did bowling and basketball. I'm a basketball girl. What don't you do? You act. You I love this. You do it all. Back to the Inspire. Your way, the way you live your life makes me um, more inspired because of what you do and how you focus on the good. There's so much negativity, but you seem to focus on the good. I always, that is true. I do focus on the good. Even though with where that things are with this world, on the negativity that's going around, the best thing is to look at the positive side. And even though there may, may be negativity, Find the positive in it. Because if you find the positive in negativity, you can change that. I love that. It's, it's so, so true about that, just focusing on the good. Because more of the good energy comes about, we'll get through all that craziness. Um, I want to talk about, we talked about Broadway. Uh, we talked about, by the way, I want to I wanna ask about that. Is there any possible way to be able to s maybe see um, Amy and the Orphans again? Yes. I don't know the dates yet, but it is said to be in London. 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 I just don't know the dates. This is amazing. So it's kind of surprising. There is a possibility. So it's making the traveling circuit. So it started in New York. Now we're now we're looking at London. Who knows really when it's out here? When it, when it's out, if it's going to be out here in California, all of my family here in California is going to know about it. That's right. And that means you right here. I I have to say I'm gonna I'm gonna be one of those fans, friend fans who are like following you so I'm and I've never been to London before so this gives me I know is that crazy I was gonna say uh, adjective to that but <laughs> it's crazy so this will give me like the inspiration to go to London because to see you I've never been have you 
Uh, yes, actually. But it'll be the first time to work in London for me. I've had traveled to, to London and, and at various points. I went one year for Thanksgiving. I, I did a mother-daughter Thanksgiving in London. I also was surprised by a trip to Europe and started in London for a high school graduation. You know, you were saying mother-daughter and... Father-daughter. Oh, father-daughter. Well, it's... Is it mother-daughter? I, I, I apologize. It's father-daughter. Well, you know, talking about family, your family is so amazing. I see you with your mom. I see you with your dad. And, 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 and your grandma. <laughs> uh, and every... Well, everybody, you have such a good, you've had such a good upbringing. It's, it's, there's so much love in the family, and it reminds me, when I see you with your family, it reminds me, in a way, of my family, because I was, I felt brought up very well, and I had an amazing dad who's no longer with us, um, but I feel him at times, and once in a while I'll talk to him, or, he's, you know, through that way. And my mom's still here. And so by seeing your family, it makes me, it reminds me of mine. So thank you. Thank you. you know, we're all, we see so much, when we see that love, when we see the positivity, when we're all working together, um, I think you're a force in that. You, you really, I believe, by just being you, are going to change the world. One dream, possibly, it's a far, it's a far thing, and, ho and hopefully, maybe, who knows, it may come true. It's a dream of mine. With um, when it comes to my advocacy, one thing that I, one dream, advocacy dream that I have, and we kind of need to do. When you guys want to see the first woman with a disability as president? Woo! <laughs> Jamie Brewer, are you announcing it here? No. Saying that, no, I was just asking if you guys want to want to see that. You guys want to see that as a person with a disability become a president. I uh, <laughs> on a global scale. Yeah. I think you know. I think we'd be way better off. <laughs> way better off. I think it would be great. And that's the dream for me. Can I be your VP? You can. <laughs> I do need a nice cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I need a nice one with a, a TV on it. And <laughs> no, that is, no, when it comes to dreams. I know, I know. When it comes to dreams, that is, that is one dream of mine with the advocacy world. It's a gorgeous dream. It's a gorgeous dream. I can, you know, what about, like, would you ever consider, like, being a senator or something like that? That, too. That is the first goal, so to become a senator. Would you want to be a senator? Someday. I'm I'm lying in the, the voting booth right now. <laughs> just... The Senate seat and president. That's it, that's I love it. There's several things that I have. There's several things that I have that um, mark in different areas of my life. And for the advocacy, it is the Senate seat and president. For I love it. It would be neat to see. No, it really would. Do you, do you see, you know, sometimes we all get into those moods like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do anything. And that, you know, that can't word, that word that we shouldn't have. And you never say that, do you? No. No, I do not. Sometimes I may slip and say it, but honestly, no, I do not say it. Because I have learned different words instead of saying can't and don't. If say can and do. I can do, and there are. Say those words. Can. Anything. I love it. I want to. I want to. I want to go back. Uh, actually, I don't want to go back. I want to go forward, because you have you have some movies. Uh, coming out, don't yes, you? This year. We've got Turnover. 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 And what's the other one? Was there another one? There is another one that's coming out also this year. It's in the festival circuit. I did a movie in uh, Minnesota. 
Um, it was on the river of Minnesota. It's called The Wagon. Oh, what, what is that about? It's two sisters that travel, that live and travel through houseboats. So they're kind of like nomads. Do, 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 do you know what, what nomads are? They, they constantly travel. They're, they're, they find home in anywhere they, they are, even though their home is a houseboat. They live on the water. So um, there's some neat little su surprises in the film. W one of the biggest things is a wagon. All right. Is it a feature or a short? It's a short. Oh, wonderful. I, I'm excited about that. I haven't heard much about that one. It's in the festival circuit right now. Okay, okay. The feature is Turnover. Tell me about Turnover. Um, uh, it, it, it was, I mean, I loved being with Blair Williamson, who I work with once. my boyfriend in Turnover. <laughs> Tell me about Turnover. Turnover is a really neat film. There's a, Paul Guilfoyle um, is in the, one of the main cast. He goes through a life change at one point due to a medical issue. And he has this cafe that starts off like Mediterranean, like a Medi not really Mediterranean, but like a French ca type of cafe that after a while turns into a really interesting place. There, there are different, diver different communities are involved in this film. And there's individuals with a neat, diverse um, group of individuals that um, begin to work at this cafe. And myself and Blair are part, are part of this film, as well as several others. There are two major communities involved in this film. One is the Deaf Syndrome community, and the other happens to be the Deaf community. Oh, yeah. There's De a lot of sign language involved. And you know sign language? Yes. Now, when did you learn sign language? I learned when I was a baby, I knew the basics, like food and drink and all that kind of stuff, but now it's expanded to different things. I, myself and my mom are both learning um, even, even more. I'm actually, with me, I'm trying to learn enough so I could become an interpreter. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, when you become a senator, you could interpret it. <laughs> that, that, that would be neat. Yeah. I think, I think this is, I, I've always wanted to learn sign language. Is there a class you take or are you learning it? On my own. On my own. I, I believe it was several years ago. I did have one class in a college class. But ever since then, I actually continued on my own. And there's another language that I'm also learning as well. What? El Espanola, Spanish. Woo! Ooh! I tell you, yeah. Focus languages are sign and and Spanish. Un poquito español. Mm. <laughs> and a few other things I can't say here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Jamie Brewer. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want the most at this moment in your life? For me, um, and this also applies to everybody else, but with me, always continuing my advocacy work and being myself, finding the zen in life, the yin yang. You can make all the jokes you want, but your new lease here, it's not gonna last at this rate. You're not gonna be around forever. Oh my God, so hardcore. The doc thinks that I should take some time off, uh, maybe even a couple of weeks. I'll find us some new hires in the next couple of days. I'll take care of it. Peter didn't tell you? Tell me what? I'm your new boss. Have you ever managed people? No, <laughs> sir. Can you start tomorrow? Here? You don't like fire people because they're like you. Can you lift a lot of dishes? I can pick up Gina. She is heavy, like a bowling ball. You've gone a little bit and too very far this time. Namaste. You're going to love your new crew. Well, that's great. I can't wait to meet them. This is the 
is like some kind of joke, right? Some YouTube joke, right? Right? I know I've been weird and a little uptight, and, uh, but I've been thinking, and uh, if you're willing, I could use your help. All of you. He doesn't even know I exist. Well, that's why you gotta go back there and put the goods right out in front of him. I was a fool, was a fool. I, knew. I, I mean, was that your plan, Henry? To sabotage us with a few existentialists and misfits because you couldn't have it your way? Yeah. Life gets rough, but things really matter. That is when we come together, not just as a, a little local restaurant, but as a community and a family. Thank you. Seize the day for tomorrow. You could... <coughs> you could possibly die. I know that you went to New York and you were on the runway. Um, tell us about that and, and how you went about doing that. How I went about being a uh, first woman with Down Syndrome to like a New York Fashion Week? Yes. It's kind of a neat thing. Um, I, there's this, this young girl named, there's a woman named Katie Driscoll. Her daughter was, I, I, when the daughter was, her name's Gracie, was trying to um, look for a role model to look up to. And I, she, her, Katie heard through um, my agent, Kate Gale, and I believe that, um, that, that there was someone out in California and that would be a good fit for Gracie to look up to. And they found me. And Gracie was like, well, I want to meet Jamie. I want to get to know her. I want to learn from her. And uh, in hearing all that, and with Katie having this um, company, I got selected by Katie. And I was just, when I wasn't really thrown into it, I just like gracefully went into it. Where was it? I was I, I, into it, and the dress I wore was inspired by AHS Coven ah. as Nan. Did somebody make the dress for you? Yes, someone made the dress. Um, also a fan of AHS, her name is Carrie Hammer. Um, her, Katie Har Car Carrie Hammer's show was role models, not runway models. And it's, there were, there were powerhouse, there, I walked with powerhouse women of major corporations. Magic Week is underway here in New York. The annual event is known for its uh, cutting edge styles and headline grabbing events. And this year, all eyes are on one extraordinary model who is turning heads and lifting hearts. ABC's Lana Zak has the story. Amid pumping beats and flashing lights, history is being made with these first confident steps. Jamie Brewer is the very first model with Down syndrome to ever take on the catwalk at a New York Fashion Week show. It, it changes. It changes yourself and it also changes the world. At designer Carrie Hammer's show, her models have never walked a runway before. They're successful professionals, making their way through life as role models, not runway models. I'm most looking forward to um, putting the most amazing women in the world on the runway and inspiring other women. Among them, top executives, philanthropists, activists, and one very special actress, Jamie. Best known for her roles on the successful FX cable series American Horror Show, says she's conquered so many fears on TV. There's a drowning scene, a, a tech, a zombies in it with a car. That walking the runway in New York's legendary fashion show is just another challenge. Embrace the fear and go for it. And that's just what she does. Bounding onto the catwalk with hands on hips, she owns the stage and with the simple act of pointing, takes on the audience. A smile, seductive for the cameras and a pirouette like a dancer. 
Finally, with the audience cheering her on, she raises both hands in the air and with a triumphant fist pump walks off the stage, a new model for a runway revolution. Lana Zak, ABC News. I remember, it really was. Look, that's huge, walking the runway. First woman with Down syndrome to walk the runway. Wow. Right now, what do I want? I have it, being here with you and with you. Um, thank you all, Jamie Brewer. Jamie Brewer. Um, what we're gonna do now is we'll get everybody, uh, we'll do this half first and we'll get uh, pictures and we, we can still uh, keep filming too, if that's cool. And um, so anybody on this side who would like to be in the picture, I'm going to uh, put you in. Yeah. Eat the bed.